the wonder of the way that I'd like to talk about today is a manuscript excerpt of The Great Divorce. It is in C.S. Lewis's own handwriting, and it's about uh, nine pages of the manuscript. And it's been really fascinating to compare this manuscript version to the printed versions of both um, the book version of The Great Divorce and then also the uh, original publication of The Great Divorce in The Guardian. So I've been noting differences and uh, there aren't very many, but the ones that I have um, been looking into are interesting and perhaps significant. I am currently in the process of working on a project on The Great Divorce um, and Tolkien's short story, Leaf by Niggle, looking at medical imagery in um, both works and looking at how both authors use the idea of Christ as um, a physician or Christ as a surgeon in order to convey the process of uh, sanctification and purification. And so um, since I'm so interested in The Great Divorce, I wanted to look at uh, what is extant of the original copy and see if anything jumped out. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a few passages that were uh, different and I will not read them in full. Um, but overall, I noticed that Lewis seemed to be softening his language um, from the manuscript version to the final version. So making it a little bit um, less uh, aggressive. And so one key difference that I noticed, and this was the, mo the biggest difference that I saw, was in the interaction between a ghost named Pam and a spirit, uh, and they're talking about the death of Pam's son. And she, um, the original version, which I'll read part of, um, the manuscript version, really focuses on how uh, God um, and Christ suffered more than Pam. And so one line was, uh, he, uh, he, Christ, suffered for you more than you suffered for Michael. Uh, and you are his daughter, even his unborn daughter. He is given you, giving you the chance to be born. Uh, no, listen, he also loves, he also waited a long time. So in this passage he, uh, from the manuscript, Lewis seems to be highlighting the fact that Christ suffered more, which of course is true, but in the published version, he really, uh, he changes it to focus more on Christ's co-passionate suffering or compassionate suffering with Pam. Um, so in the published version, he says, um, you, you exist as Michael's mother only because you first exist as God's creature. That relation is older and closer. No, listen, Pam, he also loves. He also has suffered. He also has waited a long time. And that parallelism, uh, as, I, as I'm reading it, really heightens the closeness between Christ and Pam rather than focusing on the separation between Christ's suffering and Pam's suffering. It really shows how Christ suffers with her. And I really thought that was a beautiful change to uh, focus on that closeness. Mm -hmm. And so that was one that I found really interesting, um, particularly for my paper that I'm working on, Explain it. Uh, which focuses on Christ as how Lewis depicts Christ as a surgeon, or the ghosts as surgeons, and the process of purification as a uh, surgery, which is painful but curative. And in the in the um, tradition and history of using the idea of Christ as surgeon, uh, a lot of scholars think of or depict. Christ also as a surgical patient on the cross, and then that becomes him as the wounded surgeon uh, with the resurrection, um, who comes back and heals, even if the process is painful. And throughout The Great Divorce, Lewis focuses on how the ghosts who undergo a procedure will need to be will need to undergo pain. Uh, and in the instance with the red man, or the man and the red lizard, he, uh, un the man undergoes a huge, huge amount of pain, um, but it is that very pain, um, the operation as it's called, 
using medical language, that is what is transformative. And so um, that is why I think that is significant. And then thinking about Christ also suffering with, um, with Pam as a patient and then a healer, I think that's really significant.